I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the July 17th Committee on Community Resources meeting. Um, and uh, uh, the roll, I will, I'll call the roll call. <laughs> I'm the chair, I'm Jean Louise Shara. I'm the Ward 4 City Councilor. Um, and I so. am Dennis Bidwell, Vice Chair, Ward 2 City Councilor. Maureen Carney, Ward 1 City Councilor. We are missing Councilor Klein, um, who is absent because of car troubles. So, but we have quorum, so we can go ahead and have our meeting. I'll note we are being audio and video recorded, we hope. Um, and so um, I'm going to start off, as we always do, with public comment. So I don't know if there is public here. I don't know if you're here to speak in public comment or if you're here to speak about something that's... Specific. Yes, I am here to do a public comment. Okay. So this is my first time doing this, so I don't know if you... Um, yeah, 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 please. Also, but I'll just note that if, if there's something on the agenda that you're right, no. you want to talk about, right. then you can also wait till we talk about it on the agenda and then we can talk with you okay. then. But if you want to just talk, if there's something outside of that, please feel free to come forward. <laughs> okay, thank you. You can state your name and uh, your address yes, for the record. Basically, uh, my name is Isabel Bodwey and I live at 19 Clark Avenue, which is basically across the street diagonally from here. And uh, the comment that I would like to make is um, to comment on the state of disrepair of the stairs that are linking uh, South Street to Clark Avenue. Um, these are stairs that um, we have um, taken upon ourselves to block off to the public uh, because we really believe that if they're a, a, a public nuisance to our residents, ourselves who live on that street, but also um, for all of Clark. There's also School Street, and there's also the, um, the skate park that is at the end of that street. So we basically, um, I, what I did is I, um, I went on June 15th and I um, put in a, a comment to the city inspector. Um, did not hear back. So we did quarantine and block it off ourselves. So my condo association did that. Then I sent an email to the office of the mayor on June 23rd, uh, which they then forwarded to, um, to the mayor, to DPW, um, and also the building commissioner and city council. Um, and basically what we're saying is that um, that the this, this, this stairs are in bad shape. And we have tried over the past two years to go to DPW, to go to DOT, to try to find out who the stairs belong to. And uh, the city says DPW owns them, DPW says the city owns them. So um, we've never been successful in having them talk. So finally now we're at a point where we need to close them down and we really need to find who the owner of those stairs are. And just to give you a little visual, um, there were several renditions of this, these stairs and they are part of a underpass structure, a building structure, which I have pictures of the structure actually changing over time. Now the structure we have now on the underpass is from 1948 and basically our stairs are here. If I go, I have on the left-hand side the railing of the underpass, and on the right-hand side, there's a little mural that tells you it's built in 1948, and there are stairs are in the middle here. So we need to find who the stairs belong to, and we need to have them repaired as soon as possible. And I do have handouts that I prepared. So I need your, hopefully I know I'm kind of taking your meeting as my platform, but hopefully if this can raise awareness to, um, to others, because we have not had any replies from nobody. Nobody, so. So, uh, I should have prefaced public, public comment by telling you that, personally with public comment, we can't, real, we can't respond I saw to that. the agenda. No, I saw that, I saw that. But, if, if, is your contact information on here? Yes, it is. Okay, 
So this is you a and line. I should be in touch. So I'm actually I'm also the ward four counselor, which is that ward. Oh, so you and I should be in touch. Okay. And I think we can figure this problem out. Beautiful. Please, if you could pass Thank this around. Thank you so much. Do you, can I have your card? Would you have no. my hand? I switched okay. bags just before I left. Oh, 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 that's okay. But on the city website, if you look under city council, okay. Um, it's very easy to find me. My name is Gina Louise Shara, but Ward Shara. 4 is the count is the okay. in the ward, oh, thank you very much. and uh, it should be. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry that I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. So if you see the the picture, I just show it really quickly. This is the stairs. It's black and white because my ink was going. So these are the stairs we flushed off. So this is where the overpass is, and this is the little building that the little new red that was built in 1948 and uh, these stairs right now there's a landing on the stairs and there's another old version that has the stairs going straight so we never paid for this we never did anything to them and you know we've been maintaining them for a little while we're kind of tired of them okay well um i really appreciate it so we'll be in touch and well you and i can, can thank you so much thank you thank you Is there anyone else here for public comment? Nope. Okay, so we will move on from public comment. And first uh, item is the approval of the minutes from June 19th. I move we approve the June 19th minutes. And I will second. Any discussion? Minutes? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No objections? No sentence. Okay. Um, then, are I, if it's okay with the rest of the committee, uh, is it okay if we take some items out of order? Because I, there are two other members of the audience who are here for items um, under number five. So can we move yes. some items out of order? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So um, first up, we'll Wayne. If you're ready, we'll do. Um, the order to endorse the walk bike comprehensive plan. Walk bike, walk, pedestrian bicycle comprehensive. Okay. okay. So I have a, a brief presentation, but get her up. You know, you tell me you want such detail or you know whatever tangents you want. Okay. Thank so you. just very quickly, um, Massachusetts is a somewhat odd state. Comprehensive plans are adopted by the planning board, not by city council. But as a matter of course, whenever we've done a big plan, we've always come to city council because, frankly, it doesn't really mean much if city council doesn't like the plan as well. So state statute says planning board adopts strategic and comprehensive plans, which they do, but then we always bring them to council as well in the process. We adopted the Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan about 10 years ago, nine and a half years ago. Dennis was on the, the steering committee at the time, uh, and we went through that process that was approved by the planning board, endorsed by city council. Um, it has a lot of discussion about transportation in it. It wasn't, you know, so it's transportation policies that we adopted a couple of years before the comprehensive plan. We updated those policies in the comprehensive plan. We talked a lot about a lot of things, including walking and biking. Um, and then just last year, city council adopted a complete streets ordinance, which basically took the language in the comprehensive plan and beefed up a little bit and said, we expect bicyclists, bicyclists and pedestrians to be comfortable in any surface street in the city and you know, sort of create a clear policy. So that was an actual ordinance that directs my office and DPW and the public as to what to do. Um, and we've made a lot of investments in our complete streets over the years. The, the Sand Northampton plan will be 10 years old in January. And so we've decided this is 10th birthday present. We need to revise the plan. It's been a great plan, but 10 years is about as long as we're already comfortable with doing it. We looked, last year, we looked in detail at the plan to figure what was strong and what was weak about the plan so we could start doing our homework, get ready for the big revision. And we decided two sections were weakest in the plan. One was climate adaptation. We had a lot about climate mitigation, but not much about climate adaptation. And if you remember, in the mayor's capital plan, we approved some money so we could start working on climate adaptation. The other was bicycle and pedestrians, where we had a lot of policies, but not a lot of measurable work. So we, we applied for some grants last year and got funded to do what we're calling Walk Bike Northampton a comprehensive planning section on walking and biking. Right now it's a freestanding plan. Next year we hope to bring it into the comprehensive plan. 
that plan has been approved by, has been adopted by the planning board, so it's now the city's comprehensive plan, has been endorsed by transportation and parking, and we'd like to bring it before city council. So that's sort of the background. I'm going to run through this quickly. Um, yeah. So just logistically, when the city council, because it's the planning board that is the authority, really, the city council typically endorses by way of a resolution, right? Oh, but not a resolution, by way of an order. Oh, an order. The so mayor has to approve it. Right. As well. Right. Okay. So it, it basically, it's just a stronger statement. You know, to, uh, to me, it's a say, step above a resolution, and it's a statement that, yeah, we're not doing this in isolation. We've consulted the city council. You know, we're very careful. The language we use is endorsement does not imply agreeing with every single recommendation, because we're not asking you to spend the, you know, the hundreds of hours we spent in the process. But that the, at the big picture, you're in agreement about the, the process going forward. Um, and, and just, just one. So, so it's been uh, adopted by planning board, which makes it officially part of the comprehensive plan as of this point. That's correct. Okay. Um, so, I just, just quickly, I want to take you back to the beginning of my career and, and sort of think about how transportation's changed over the cities. This has always been a progressive city, and I will say during that time period from the end of World War II. To the 1990s, when people were really sort of ignoring bicycles and pedestrians, this city was doing a lot more than a lot of cities. So when I when I'm about to bash it, know that you're still ahead of most of your peers. You know, you guys built the first bike path in at least Western Mass, maybe in the state, that came live in 1985. The subdivision regs have been requiring sidewalks since 1995, I think. Um, lots of investments are doing it, but nonetheless, there was that time period. This ended 20 years ago, where we sort of neglected all these things. You know, um, River Run has no sidewalks, and you couldn't get to anywhere from River Run. Um, and there's lots of those around. This takes a long time, a lot of investments to make up for it. Um, so this is sort of quickly my my snapshot of big watershed events. You know, we did the first bike path in 1985. That's the great news. 1988, we redid all King Street. Not a single pedestrian signal on the entire King Street. Now, no one would even think about doing that. I wouldn't be legal now, but that's you know that gives you a sense of where we were in 1988. Um, around that same time period, though, on Pleasant Street, we did a, a, an aggressive traffic calm and put those curb extensions. So again, we were leading the state, not the country, in some areas and joining the crowds in, in, in other areas out there. Um, in the same mid 90s, we started requiring sidewalks in all our subdivisions. Originally, there were asphalt sidewalks on one side of the street. Over the years, we beefed it up, and now we require concrete sidewalks on two sides of the street. Um, in, you know, I, I'm proud of this. So one of my first developments with this is in the mid-90s, we actually did a fundraising campaign to pay for the first pedestrian signal on King Street by stopping shop. And the reason I'm, I'm proud of this is it's really, paying for a traffic signal is about the least sexy thing that you can do, and yet we got contributions. We, we used other money from Stop and Shop to actually build the signal, but the design was paid for by contributions. Um, and in some ways, that was a watershed that you know we could come to your predecessors and say, look, 100 people contributed money to us. They really thought it was important. And we've sort of been doing more and more over the time. The mayor got part of his start in politics by the ZBA and partially by being on the mayor's task force for safe streets, whatever its original name is. Um, so you know, so the city was growing during that time period. Um, we started adding sidewalks for any new, you know, full depth reconstruction of the street. In the mid 2000s, um, by the late 2000s, we tripled the amount of rail trail miles. We did lots of different things. Now, where we are is anytime DPW is redoing an arterial street in the city, if they can, they're adding bike lanes. So, you know, we've really sort of come full circle. But we still are a little bit hit or miss in some areas. So, I go before transportation and parking or before city council. And I'm hearing everybody saying, oh, sidewalks are great, let's put sidewalks everywhere. And speed humps are great, let's put speed humps everywhere. But traffic calming, those are sort of the, the low-hanging fruit, if you will. There's lots of other things. So in some places we put speed humps in, and places are not going to work. Right? It slows down traffic for 200 feet, and then cars speed up again. Um, and so we, we I still move that next step of thinking about how we do these things comprehensively to look at everything. King Street's a good example. We're spending a million dollars of grant money in King Street right now to make a very short section of model complete street space. And every single day, frankly, we get beat up by truckers who say, oh my goodness, this turn's going to be real difficult. 
And they're actually right. Some turn and movements off of Pleasant Street, it may be a lot more difficult. You can no longer do the 25 miles an hour, you have to slow down to 5 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour if you're in a truck, you're doing it. And so there's deliberate trade offs. What's wrong with sidewalks from my standpoint is there's no trade offs. Give me money, I can do sidewalks. But we're not really going to get to the, the goal a lot of us have is called Vision Zero. To someday imagine, you know, we all accept that we get two fatalities a year in Northampton traffic, and about 35% of those are pedestrians or bicycles. And so the idea of vision zero is just, we shouldn't be accepting that. Not that we're ever really, frankly, getting it down to zero, but that each time someone dies, we shouldn't say, well, these things just happen sometimes. We should be thinking about challenging ourselves for doing it. And so Pleasant Street is sort of an attempt to, to create those clear metrics and say, here's what we're really trying to do. Um, and so it's out of that thinking that this bike ped plan came. So it, it does two important things. It has a list of projects and what we're trying to prioritize. Far more projects than we can ever afford, but at least begins the conversation. Of the money on Pleasant Street, $400,000 came from the state grant for complete streets, and we were only eligible for that grant because we had prioritized what our projects would be. So we said Pleasant Street's number one, the state gave us $400,000 towards that project. So the plan is very concrete in that area, and then it's a little more abstract in terms of what are the policy guidelines? We can't identify every intersection. So what are things we should start thinking about um, in terms of those big things? So again, think about trade-offs. We're looking at Main Street and redoing all of Main Street. This is a 10 or 15 year process. You're not going to see it soon. But the mayor's approved funding for the design, which is a big ticket item. And then we're in the queue for about $8 million of federal funds to build this. Again, 8 to 10 years down the line. Um, and one of our biggest challenges, Main Street's really wide. If, if you looked at Main Street, this sort of street anywhere in the country, you'd expect to consider it incredibly unsafe. You just don't build a Main Street this wide. It says a lot about our both citizens and our land use patterns that Main Street works, that very few people get killed, but it really doesn't meet a lot of the, the safety pieces. Um, and I'll give you one example of this, which is until about nine years ago, we would proudly say, oh, we don't have any high crash intersections on Main Street. Isn't that great? We pat ourselves in the back. You know, our high crash intersections are places like Damon and Bridge and Cons and, and, and uh, Fruit until we get roundabout um, and in front of Wolf Park, but nothing downtown. And then the state changed the formula on us. They used to look at each intersection in town, and we were low crash. Then they started looking at clusters. They looked at downtowns. And we went from not showing up the list, no one intersection is that dangerous, to being the sixth highest crash rate in the entire Commonwealth for bicycles and pedestrians. Because while Maine, no one intersection on Main Street is horrible, if you look at Maine from Smith College to Hallway Street, and you look at State Street down to Hampton Avenue, then suddenly we have a lot of crashes. And so it got us thinking about those things differently. These, these clusters, what you're looking at, we do. Um, so we're doing this work, this slide just that on Pleasant Street, you know, thinking about Pleasant Street, narrowing down Pleasant Street in three separate locations to 21 feet, which is not, it's not, none of these things we're doing are, you know, the so-called bleeding edge. We're not breaking any new ground, but we're taking lessons from communities who experiment. How narrow can you get and still allow trucks to come through? We want trucks to come through. One of our goals for Pleasant Street is we don't want to lose a single car trip. We're not trying to reduce the number of cars. Because if you reduce the cars, they go somewhere else. And it makes Con Street worse, or makes, you know, uh, Hallway Street worse. We try to keep the same number of cars, but we are trying to slow the speed uh, of the traffic. So we're trying to do those kinds of things. Um, this is part of a much broader piece on Pleasant Street, trying to get a lot of investments. We've already seen a lot of new investments. Obviously, it's the two quasi-public property projects going on, HAP Housing, Dallas CDC. We've seen one apartment building change hands to become higher end condos. We've seen a couple of investments in my, the, uh, the break kinks, the property change hands recently, a lot of interest investments. So we're seeing that, you know, in making these things more pedestrian bicycle friendly, they can be a lot friendlier to merchants, you know, more jobs, more taxes, you know, more pedestrian friendly. But it's a lot of steps come together to, to make them work. Um, similar process going on in King Street. DPW is right now designing King Street between North and the bike path, and where it's two lanes. Right now it's two lanes each direction for most of that area. 
where it's two lanes, so we'll go to one lane in each direction with basically turn pockets. So in some places, there actually be more lanes. The southbound on King Street coming into Finn, they'd be both a right turn lane and a left turn lane, but the through traffic would be easier. Just an example of how widespread this is. Mascot for years used to be the enemy. They wanted more roads. They commissioned a study for enhanced transit through Hadley, and they discovered that Route 9 can actually carry more cars. It, right part of Route 9 now is four lanes and parts three lanes. They discovered it actually carrying more cars that goes to three lanes throughout. So you have a lot of turn pockets. You can turn, you're not making cars queue, but you don't have cars weaving back and forth. It's the weaving that creates crashes and that creates obstacles. So, they, this one, so we're doing sort of similar type things on King Street, and it's reflected in the comprehensive plan as well. So that's sort of, sort of the background of the kind of things we're looking at. Um, so the plan itself has sort of three or four pieces. There's the plan, which is actually was before you were asked to adopt. There's a transect of complete streets throughout the entire region. To think about you know, what is the right treatment, because no, no, two, no si two situations are exactly the same. So the solution in rural leagues is different than the solution on Pleasant Street. So we just did a series of diagrams to think about what that is, um, some technical appendices and sort of you know, design standards, and then spent a fair amount of time looking at Main Street itself, thinking about what should Main Street be if it were going for. So this, this design manual, again, you're not asking, being asked to adopt this, but just to understand the context, lots of appendices that I won't go through. Main Street, this is sort of a quick sense of how this has grown. We've done a series of studies. We first hired Nelson Nygaard, who's one of the nation's leaders, to help us think about Pleasant Street and King Street. The work on King Street resulted in that the design work I mentioned on King Street now, and Pleasant Street, I mean, and, and uh, Main Street. Then we hired all to design as part of this process to look in more detail, to think about this intersection is that very complex intersection outside of Edwards Church, you know, Maine, Elm, West, State, North and East, South Street. So sort of, could we narrow the box? This is one of the areas where we realized how much this entire, but this, what this would do is would bring the stop lines in. Right now, that's, that entire signal is about two minutes and five seconds, two minutes and 10 seconds. That means everybody gets really impatient at that light. And you can measure that, go there any rush hour and measure how many cars keep going when the light turns yellow, and almost always one car will either go when the light turns red. And I used to say it's bad driving, but in some ways it's bad engineering. If, if drivers are so frustrated that they're running red lights, there's something wrong with the way we're designing it. And likewise, pedestrians jaywalk. Pedestrians are bad and evil, but when they do that, it's also, they don't, no one wants to wait a minute and a half the next week. Long. So the original design was narrowing this box, this design would be relatively inexpensive. It would solve an enormous amount of work. It doesn't work only because of truck movements on Main Street turning left on New South. So we're trying to work with MassDOT. They have a new uh, transportation secretary who's a breath of fresh air, who for the first time is saying maybe we shouldn't be designing these intersections around 5% of the trips. You know, exactly the issue we have on Pleasant Street. Yes, it's going to be a little bit harder to make a, a truck delivery on Pleasant Street than it used to be but we don't get that many truck deliveries on Pleasant Street that we want to have fatalities to, to make up for. So it sort of it helped our thinking going forward. Um, we've done a lot of pieces that go forward. So NASA hired Tool Engineering and Walk Boston to do a safety study of, of Main Street. This is what led to us looking at Kirkland Avenue, I'm, I'm sorry, Cracker Bar Alley, the alley across from City Hall and saying we don't need that alley and, and closing would make it safer. Um, you probably can't see it from where you are, but Alta sort of came up with this programmatic idea of saying, yes, Main Street needs these turn pockets, lots of places where there's a left turn lane, a few places where there's a right turn lane. We want the full width of lanes going through the signals. If you think about it, what really controls how many cars would move through Main Street is how many cars can move through the intersection, right? That's where the meter is. If you can't move through the intersection, it doesn't matter how fast you can go from Academy of Music to King Street, we can get stuck those two intersections. So narrowing down the lane between the two doesn't reduce any of our capacity. Narrowing down the lane going to the intersection would reduce the capacity. So we're looking at how do we keep those lanes width to move, you know, two cars, two, two lanes to each intersection at the same time, but narrow down the streets in between. Um, and so that's sort of in the plan. And then lots of, some of you may have seen the demonstration day that we did last summer. 
sort of showing if we now at Main Street, how did it work? Um, you know, you had a bike lane to the process. And so the plan sort of builds on Main Street, but then looks at these things throughout the city. I'm not going to go, again, I'm happy to get questions. I'm not going to go through the plan in detail. Um, if I have some slides, but again, the plan is a series of specific actions. This came out of the community. This came out of uh, all to trying to prioritize the projects. This is reflected in these complete streets transition plan that we filed with mass stops. We hopefully get funding for these things. And then there were a series of goals, objectives, and actions. I won't go through them all, but the goals are, are most of these are out of the existing comprehensive plan. We're just taking them a little bit first. We've always had to ensure safe and efficient transport of goods and people by motor vehicles, bicycle, foot, and other means. This is important. This is, even though this is part of a bike and ped plan, yes, there's some trade offs of things like truck turning movements. But the goal is not to reduce the capacity of motor vehicles. The majority of people are going to do a majority of their trips by cars. We're not trying to prevent that from happening. My 94-year-old mother is not going to suddenly start walking more than 100 feet. That's a long walk for her. So we're not trying. To, this isn't a matter of trade-offs. It's a matter of, you know, how do we narrow the streets that might be slower cars, slower car traffic. That's a trade-off, but not trying to reduce the capacity. So that's sort of one of the pieces. Then we go through a series of steps for that. Um, and the second goal is circulation system that accommodates development and encourages bike and pedestrian transit. Again, you know, we, we consider sustainable enhancement to be a, a pro-growth document. We want new development in town in the right places, um, but we want that to accommodate bikes and pets. We can say it through. Again, a series of objectives and actions I think you need to do um, Improve and expand public transit. And obviously, most of this is PBTA, most of this outside funding. But we are thinking about other things that we can do. Where PDTA and most transit programs in the country have been recently is reduce bus mileage on places where buses are really expensive and make them more efficient. So we talk about choice riders and transit dependent riders. Choice riders are, think about the buses between downtown Northampton and Amherst. Great system. I teach at Amherst. I can take a bus just as fast as I can drive there. I can plan my computer on my way there. If I want to take a bus to Hampshire Heights, it's 50 minutes. I'm not going to, I mean, I own a car. I'm not going to do that bus because I'm not a transit dependent rider. But sometimes you can think about what are the things you can do to make the system a little bit more friendly and car time away. So, for example, in Route 9, which the state's looking at, they're looking at the bus takes about five or ten minutes to go through the malls. Can you put a, a pull off for the bus by Trader Joe's? It's not that long a walk across the mall. It would say five or ten minutes. For the buses, and everyone go. Most, most riders aren't getting off of the mall, so most riders it saves time in their trip. You can squeeze in more buses for the same dollar amounts, or this year cut less for the same dollar amounts. Um, and that relatively, so it's that kind of thing we're looking. At. Not not trying to decrease bus service, but one of the reasons it's in this plan is we're t trying to tie in for sidewalks, right? So we often think about the most expensive. You've heard this for cable TV and, and internet. It's exactly the same thing for transit. The most expensive mile for transit is the last mile. Right? Amherst Northampton is a good, efficient system, but that last quarter mile from the bus stops to your house, where not that many people are going that way, really expensive to include transit. So we're looking at that in particular about how do we how do we make it safer? So, for example, River Run really lobbied heavily for bus service. It wouldn't make sense. It would be unaffordable. It would make that 50 minute headway or 45 minute headway to Florence. Street to Florence Heights, even worse. But how do we make sure we get, well, this other way anyway, but how do we make sure we get sidewalks on Damon Road so River Run people can walk safely and get to the bus? So it's that kind of thing we're looking at in terms of uh, peace. Um, appropriate uh, bicycle and pedestrian parking, you know, pretty small, but part of the Pleasant Street project for buying eight new bike racks and things like that. Um, walking bicycle trips for education, encouragement, enforcement, evaluation programs, and feedback loop in the process. I can do a lot more detail, but I think that'd be really important. So, questions? Thank you. So, from us today, so just to um, make it clear, so, so for the, and the order says it as well, we're not, we are, we are, endorsement of this is endorsement of sort of the concept of the plan. We're not, not every, I mean, there are hundreds of suggestions or ideas in, in the whole plan, not just the, <clears throat> and so that's, we're not, Endorsing every single thing in it, we are just endorsing. That's right. Yeah. It, it's, just so you know, it's important for a few reasons. 
it's certainly important for grant purposes. So when we apply for the complete streets grants, you know, we, we have these two grants adding up $2.9 million for Pleasant Street, for streets and, and storm sewer. We certainly cite things like this. So we will be using your name in vain, if you will. But then you see this most often, I come before you frequently for open space. I will say, it, it, almost always the open space thing says, here's what the open space plan says, adopted by city council. So I'm, I'm citing that, but, but the actual action, I'm coming back to you for a second vote. So you can say, yes, that was the plan, but we know we just endorsed it, we didn't adopt everything. This particular acquisition we don't want to support. So same thing, for coming before you for a piece, yeah, you have every right to vote no in the project. Anyone have a question, please? The, 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 there's, there's a lot of stuff in here. I just did, I just looked at the executive summary, not the whole thing, but, 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 but even there, the, the, the strategies and actions. Um, so when it comes to prioritizing, is, is this basically, in, in many ways, a sort of a 10 to 15 year shopping list subject to availability of grant funds? Is, is that kind of what this is? Yes, the two things. One is we, we didn't define it by time, so I, don't, I couldn't tell you how quickly it will take. And then the second thing is, and other, other shopping lists will come in as well. So DPW, for example, has hired also the same firm we did to send a wheelchair full of equipment down every sidewalk in the city. And they're doing, you, you all know what the pavement management system is for streets? They're now doing exactly the same thing for sidewalks. So they're gonna come back in the shopping list. And they just to take the politics that work with sidewalks. They're gonna come back and say, here's the sidewalks falling apart, here's the gaps, here's the one. So, Yes, this is a list, we're gonna use this list, but there'll be other lists coming forward as well. So going back to you're not, you're certainly not bound by this being the only list. Right. The only, the, the, there's two places where the plan had an immediate impact. So the state has a complete streets program that gives up to $400,000 a year to a community. But up to is the operative word. There's no way we're gonna get $400,000 a year. To be eligible for the funding, they asked us to do an exercise. They said, let's say we did give you $400,000 a year for the next five years. What are your projects? And so we gave them a list of $400,000 of projects, or $200,000 of projects, um, you know, for the next, next five years of projects. Um, so that we can't change, and that came out of this plan. But if, you know, you and the mayor adopt more money in capital improvements, we find some new grant, you don't have to use this, these things here. The other place where it comes in is the one place where a plan has, has a legal effect is the planning board issues both site plans and special permits. And one of the criteria there is compliance with the comprehensive plan. So there are places in town where we have what we call orphan sidewalks for orphan bike lanes, where there's a bike lane in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't really seem to make sense, or a bike path. You know. So between, um, Pathways co-housing, for example, in Rocky Hill. There's suddenly a, a third of a mile bike path. That's because we have a comprehensive plan for bike path that goes from downtown all the way up to the Leeds at a uh, Ryan Road School. And it goes right through that property. So that developer came forward, and to get a permit, we said you have to build that one third of a mile section. So it's important as developments come forward, we have a clear vision of where we want to go. But that's the only legal thing. It doesn't bind DPW's hands, it doesn't bind state. Just uh, as an aside, the, the, the DPW study of sidewalks, I know that's not your thing, but what, what, what is the timetable on that? Do you, do you know? They finished the field work, yeah. uh, and now they're doing an assessment. One of the assessments actually is exactly how wide are some of the rights of way? Because we're trying to figure out if there's a gap and we own the property, putting a sidewalk is just a matter of some money. If there's a gap and it's privately owned land, then it's a little more complicated because you might have to acquire it. There may be some other assessments as well, but I know uh, analysis as well. So they're in analysis phase and should be done shortly. Any other questions or thoughts on this? Um, just as a follow up, um, this is the first in a series of uh, amendments to the Sustainable Northampton. Yes. You see? Okay. So the, the next one will be the climate change plan. Okay. And then everything else. So if you read this, the plan, the way we wrote it was the executive summary, what Dennis was talking about. That we hope we can cut and paste to bring into the comprehensive plan. And then the rest of the plan, the, the thick list of items, that's going to be more appendix material. Okay. So what we want, we're trying to find a fine line. When you go to the community for a comprehensive plan, you want to be open to everything. 
But if the plan process takes three years, we lose everybody. So it made sense for us to do the things we desperately know we needed to work, to do those first, and then we go back to the community. And maybe people say, we love the open space plan just the way it is, or we went on the changes as well. But it sort of informs that process. But, okay. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Thank so you. Um, sorry about that. That's OK. Um, so as was noted, this was previously endorsed by Transportation and Parking Commission um, and adopted by the Planning Board. So I guess we are looking for a motion to endorse um, the Walk Bike Northampton plan, and then it will go forward to City Council for. I, I'll make a motion that we. Uh, are we recommending to the full council their endorsement of this plan? Yes, we're saying our committee is endorsing it yeah. and that they will. I recommend our endorsement of it and recommendation of the council. As well. Okay, I have a second. Great. Um, any further discussion on the motion? No. All those in favor? Aye. No objections, no abstentions? No. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Okay. So next up is uh, we're going to talk about the taxi ordinance again. This mm -hmm. is our bad penny ordinance that keeps coming back. But I'm I'm confident we will move it out of here and it will never come back. So just to give everyone, so actually Pam um, for legislative matters, she had given a whole timeline on where this ordinance had been. Now, like, there are at least, you know, a couple more lines to this timeline that could be added. Um, but since it left here at our last meeting, it went to legislative matters. Um, at that meeting was Solicitor Seawald, who sat in and kind of went, we went line by line with him on it. Um, additionally, in the audience and participating in the audience was Jeffrey Miller, who is the founder and owner of Cosmic Cat. So there was sort of there's like a, a very long, comprehensive debate about the ordinance. From that, there were significant enough changes that the chair, um, Councilor Murphy, thought that it's appropriate to send it back here to us since we had done so much work on it. And additionally, you'll see one of the main changes that came out of that meeting involves us directly. So I agree that it was appropriate for it to come back to us so we could look over all those changes and see how we feel about them before it goes back to legislative matters again one more time and then hopefully finally on to the full council. So the, I, I would say the best, I have so many versions of this, it's hard to keep track, but um, I, it's okay if we go over it kind of quickly and I will point out what the changes that um, happened between here and uh, coming back here. Um, and additionally, Solicitor Seawald sent um, changes to me on Friday. He reworked some of it, and so that's also incorporated here. So this, this is where we are at the moment, and I'll note what he's changed. So starting, and I'm going to note that the city clerk is here, um, and recognize the city clerk, Pam Powers, who's here because this also involves her department. So, um, Pam, please feel free to participate with us um, as we talk about this. Mm -hmm. So, starting on the first page, um, you know, and actually before I do that, let me. Just, I'm just going to kind of go through the four main points that were changed, and then we'll go through the whole thing. But. The main changes that you'll see were that um, the big one is that the appeals process is changed from having it originally it was public it went to the community public safety then it was changed to here community resources um, when we were meeting with uh, the solicitor he'd seen it before but he said all of a sudden he said wait a minute why is a why is the appeals process going to council. So this is it is appeal from a city department, right? So it's appealing what the the police department would be issuing the permit and or not issuing it. And the appeals process 
would be coming to us. And he said, by charter, that doesn't make, the, the city council shouldn't be able to appeal a decision by a city department that's overseen by the mayor. So that was kind of, that's sort of the big change that you're gonna see here. So uh, that now goes to, the, the appeals process goes to the mayor's office. Um, the other thing that we need to talk about is insurance. He, he's, I think we may have talked about this at the last meeting, um, the solicitor has concerns about the levels of insurance and thinks that they're too low. He and also uh, Pam talked to some different um, insurance agencies and talked about like other possible levels. So he's leaving sort of the political decision up to us to whether we're going to change those um, those levels or. But he has information for us on that. Um, additionally. Mr. Miller had strong feelings about um, having it be meters. And um, so uh, originally the, the ordinance, the original ordinance was called for meters. So it has always been meters, um, but it's never, it's not been enforced and there have not been meters used. Additionally, there also were rates that were attached to it. This, we are now striking the rates, but we are calling for meters being used. He's apparently always used zones, um, and he would like that to be in the ordinance, but I, I had a conversation, I know that the solicitor had a conversation with Chief Casper. Um, also, Chief Casper was invited to be here today. She couldn't be here. Also, um, Officer Allard, who had been here once, also couldn't be here today. So, I talked to her about, about the issue of, um, of meters, and she said that they extensively looked into this. They looked at all different options and ways of tracking charges, and really felt that meters, which are now available easily by apps, and apparently Mr. Miller has said that he already has the apps, that that is the fairest way. Their problem with zones is that it's hard to be able to really know if people are all being charged the same amount for different zones, and it's hard to determine where the zones are, and. Right now, I think their zoning is like from city center, but that's kind of, it's vague. And if you go go from city center, you go to know it's where um, really the the most fair way to make sure that everybody is treated equally is if you do it by time. So the the department feels very strongly that that is the way to go. So those are sort of those are and then the, there was also a long discussion about the alcohol section that I'll talk about and the smoking section um, that we're looked into. So going forward. On the first page, um, the main, so uh, the solicitor noted that we had said under registration of vehicles, so section one under definitions, um, it had been called a license. Everywhere else it's called a permit, so we changed it to permit. Additionally, that last sentence is, was struck by him. Um, and then, on to the next section with taxi cabs. He, and something that he would like us to choose is, so right now it says seating capacity not to exceed the manufacturer's recommended seating capacity. He would like us to set a number for that seating capacity. So um, the suggestion is eight. So I don't know if people are comfortable with that. Just means that we, you know, a bus can't operate as a taxi. Um, but someone could have like a minivan that operates as a taxi, but it sort of just limits what we're going to consider could be a taxi. And so the eight, <coughs> I mean, there's, 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 I'm just thinking of the minivans, one, two, three, four, five. Well, three, three in the way back, three in the middle, two in the front. Right. Yeah. Or a van, or, maybe it's, or, maybe there's a van. Or a nine, ten. Minivan. But, but. <coughs> but it also has to, it, I mean, it can't, go above the seating capacity for the vehicle that's stated on the vehicle. But this is more about limiting what vehicles we think are permissible for a taxi. Mm -hmm. So he would have us say, you could keep the reference to manufacturer recommended seating capacity, but in no event, no more than eight. Is that, is that to keep the reference to? Yes. Including the driver? I, yes. It would have to include the driver. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, so a metered motor vehicle with a seating capacity, not to exceed the manufactured seating capacity. Um, 
and and I think you put a, a, a clause after that, right? And not to exceed eight passengers, including driver. Okay. But what 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 what's matching about eight? Because a very common scene would be three, three, two, and two in the front. There's you know the driver and one. Two in the front. Then the next row back is three. And the next row back is three. It's typical. Okay. Yeah, I, guess, I, I guess I guess I'm thinking of a vehicle that's got one more. Like oh, another row. Van. Oh, another row. Yeah. I, I don't know if there yeah. Are. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, do we really? Do we really? I mean, that's more like the, that would be then like an airport shuttle, right? Or maybe like for the sizes. That would be eleven. Maybe. Right? Mm -hmm. and three rows of three. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't know enough about vehicles to know which right. vehicle. It, but. There's, there's a concern a, that vehicles that are larger than eight passenger vehicles be used. And who expressed that concern? The solicitor, I believe. And just the sort of the legislative matters in general was sort of debating about whether, you know, then you get outside of taxi. And also keep in mind that you, we already have it written in here that you can't, you can't pick up a fare and then pick up another fare and keep picking up fares till you fill up. So this would be like going, this would be picking up a fare that had eight people in the party. What about, so, okay. what about a vehicle the size of like the school bus van that's just like a van? Is that, that may be larger than the, than the eight that I'm thinking. Do you know what I'm talking about? That, so, right. so, but it's still just like a, a passenger van. But would would not if not an SUV. Right. Would someone hire that just I mean, would that then fall under a livery category or would that fall under a taxi category? Is that something that you would hire just within a twelve hour window or would you be planning for the hiring of that vehicle? Eight's fine with me. I'll defer to those folks who've given a lot more thought than I have. Yeah. So. Okay, so I say eight. Yeah, that's eight. Okay. Um, then this was in the original, but the solicitor like so the uh, under taxi cabs. Last sentence. Um, it's a long sentence. Operated, you can just start it. Yeah, yeah operated. operated for hire by or on behalf of the holder of the business owner's permit. So instead of named insured, he wants it to say holder of the business owner's permit. Or by the employee or independent contractor of said permit holder. Okay. And moving on to the next page. Can I just ask you a yes. question? So are, are these are these some changes that have come um, Friday since Legislative Affairs? Do you, I can tell you. Some, some are before, some after. Yeah, I can tell you which uh, ones are before no, and which no. are after. Um, actually, yeah, because what's, what's further complicated is that he made comments on June 3rd and July, and July, June 13th and July 13th, so it's like hard to distinguish. I just see J-U-N-13 or J-U-L-13? <laughs> making me a little bit nuts. But, uh, um, so the permit holder is July 13th. So that was talked about last week. Um, then then the, then under livery vehicles, the only thing that's changed is last sentence in which vehicle is not required to obtain a taxi cab license under this ordinance it when we when he looked into it it doesn't really fall under that chapter of mass general law so it's more appropriate to say under this ordinance um, moving down now under 316 17 business owners permit uh, some of these changes the more the recent changes for this section.
20 days of the filing thereof, the decision of the mayor or their designee shall be final and binding. So that is that big mm -hmm. change there. Does anyone have any, con I mean, we're, no, I we're up I against the same I charter. I understand the logic issue, of it yeah. in terms of the charter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of wish it had been caught earlier, but I feel like we've had plenty of discussion that could have been avoided, but okay. We're there now. Um, okay, so moving on to section E. We had spent some time on this. We spent time on it uh, in Legislative Matters, the whole um, disorderly conduct, and then transporting alcohol. So, um, we, so I think we had decided um, that we agreed it made sense to encourage people who are intoxicated to take cabs instead of right. driving. So um, we changed it from is intoxicated to a person who conducts themselves, uh, provided the person conducts themselves in an orderly fashion. Um, Can I just ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes drunks who mostly need the use of a cab would not be described as behaving in an orderly um, right. fashion. Did, was there any thought given to some other, like, does not pose a physical threat or something? Uh, as opposed to orderly. conducting it. I, it's highly, it's totally, it's obviously totally Drunk subjective. Drunk and disorderly is usually kind of coupled. Right, that might have been. That, that word. Well, that's that true. Drunk, 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 right. drunk and, and, and disorderly. And the point is, mm -hmm. we don't therefore want to limit it to just orderly drunks because drunks are by definition sometimes disorderly. But I guess we also want to leave leeway for the driver to make a decision about whether they feel safe. I guess. And that they feel safe about. I guess any way you do it, even yeah. if you said Yeah, because what it says here is it wouldn't be their duty, it shall be the duty of the driver to accept provided that the person, so right. uh, yeah, it says a driver, then if somebody was being drunk and disorderly, they may not want to take their fare. Right. right. I guess I, it, it's gonna be subjective no matter what right. you say. Even if you say it does not pose a physical threat, it's still in the opinion at the time of the right. driver, so, okay. Um, then moving on to H, what was H? H was, um, higher was the common care was first it originally said that you couldn't transport alcohol without a common carrier's license then we struck that now the entire section is being struck because with the, the reasoning that came out of legislative matters was that People will often take a cab if they've gone to the grocery store. We don't want to prohibit people from transporting um, right. their own groceries, which right. may contain alcohol. That's what I was wondering about. Yeah. Yeah. And also, <clears throat> Mr. Miller said that they don't, as a practice, they they don't pick up things for people. He's, he's, he said, you know, he has a couple little ladies who occasionally will pick up their groceries, but generally their policy is that you can't say like, go to the packy and get me this, like they don't, they don't do that. They need an actual human in the car. So that, it, that wasn't really an issue, um, so we don't want to prohibit people from doing things that should be lawful. Um, so moving down to what used to be J is now, no? Uh, I, yes. Um, so we had changed the profane and obscene language. Um, and the, the one conversation that we had around this was smoking. Um, and I actually looked into it because Mr. Miller had said that he does allow his drivers to smoke if they don't have a fare. So if they are off duty, they don't have a fare, they could smoke. Um, and then he feels that the smoke then leaves the vehicle and it's safe. We had a long discussion about why isn't it like another business? Why, you know, why isn't the cab treated like a business? You can't go into a business and smoke. 
Um, I actually looked up the Mass General Law, and you are 100% prohibited from smoking in a cab at all, driver or fare. So, really? Yes. So that is not legal to have drivers or passengers smoking in the car at all. Um, Which would apply to smoking marijuana, too, so, no matter what the substance. Good way. Yes. Right. It's the smoke that's the issue, not what's being burned. Um, so that stays, and we will have to tell Mr. Miller. Um, continuing on, we caught a few more his or hers, or his, there was a couple of hises that we've left behind that were changed to there. There, additionally, in subsection <coughs> 3, 16, 19, vehicle register, uh, permit requirements for vehicles, uh, number two, there are various references to um, Clauses and mass general law sections. Which which so section? This is no, sorry number. So what page? Um, I don't know if I'm right. 16, oh, 19. Oh, 19. <laughs> okay, okay. the pages are numbered. Sorry. Yeah. Three sixteen nineteen. Permit Three sixteen required. nineteen. Yep. Yep. A two. Yes. No permit shall be issued under that. Um, taken out uh, in this. In the third sentence, the third line, uh, specified in subdivision B of the sixth clause of subsection 47 of chapter 175, um, and it's just now in the comp, or and now it just says, um, has delivered to city clerk a policy of insurance issued by an insurance company authorized to transact business in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts covering the motor vehicles to be operated by the applicant under their permit. Then uh, the next bit is struck to chapter two, uh, nor, and then to nor until the applicant has also delivered to the city clerk certificate of the insurance company. Um, and I believe the reason was that if it's falling under master law, we don't, it's, it's law, we don't need to cite all of it. I think that was the reason, otherwise it was cited wrong. But that was the reason it was struck by. Yeah. Do you remember? No. Makes sense. So this now brings us, and then in that next paragraph, there was a his that's changed to there. Um, the end of the of number two, that that bit is about the insurance. So um, Alan spoke to Peter Whalen. Of oil and insurance, and he said that the limits available for taxis are two hundred fifty thousand slash five hundred thousand for personal injury or death, and fifty thousand for property damage. So presently, we have a hundred, we have a hundred, three hundred, and twenty-five. So these are significantly higher. He had concerns that these were too low. Um, the issue, concern expressed by Mr. Miller is that this will change his premiums, of course, and make it more expensive. But the solicitor had real concerns that it posed a liability for the city and that these were so low that, you know, a $100,000 was not going to, if someone was injured, that wasn't going to be remotely sufficient to handle an injury. I, I also recall Mr. Miller said he wasn't able to get a policy above 100, 300. He, now he, he said that and then the solicitor said, well, we'll, we'll check. And the solicitor's research showed, found that they are issued to taxis at a higher level. So I, it's not clear whether Mr. Miller meant he tried and was rejected at a higher level or whether he was under the 
the wrong um, assumption that he couldn't get a higher amount or that the agency that he uses doesn't do a higher amount. But it was found by the solicitor that you can do a higher amount. He would be more comfortable with that. But it is, unfortunately, our decision. I mean, ours, who are, you know, all of ours, whether we want to change those rules. Do we have? We have a frame reference of what, what, what it is in Springfield, what it is in Bloomfield, what it is in Austin. Kim, did you look into that? No, we talked about how to. Yeah. 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 I mean, my off, off the top of my head reaction is yeah, those, those seem kind of low, but, right. but, but I don't have any, like I said, frame reference, what, other, what is in other cities. Mm -hmm. I, did, I did send you the information on what. Um, King and Cushman, right, and what they had said. July 6th is when I emailed whoever and Bernard. Okay. I, mean, uh, I found it. So, yeah. Uh, so, this is from Richard Weber. He says to Pam, I would commend the City Council for requiring more responsible insurance limits for our community. It's always welcome if and when someone is hurt. There is certainly the availability of limits up to, he says, a million dollars for taxis. Firms could buy many millions in addition to that if they had the financial resources. However, the cost is not inexpensive because, of course, the risk of injury is greater than folks uh, that occasionally use their own cars for just a few hours a day. Um, and then I think he's saying here, I, I do not, there's a word missing. Um, I think he's maybe saying, I do know that folks that drive for Uber and Lyft are purchasing insurance from those companies as part of their package requirements for limits of a million. Is that what you? Yeah. Well, that, that's Weber and Grinnell, but King and Cushman had oh, all, also responded, I want to say, on or about July 6th. I think Mr. Grinnell's response was last week. probably says Weber and Grinnell on, July, on or about July 6th because, uh, right, okay. Maybe I didn't Wait, are you, am, am I looking for King and Cushman or Weber and Grinnell? It would be King and Cushman. Maybe I didn't include them I don't in, um, have, email. I just have the Weber and Grinnell one. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I'm back. procedurally, is this going to legislative affairs again on its way to the council? Yes, it has to be the last stop. Right. Um, I mean, it, this 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 is one where I I I, I would I would I would think we. Would, Benefit from some additional information from other municipalities. Okay. And 
I would, I would agree with raising limits um, 250, 550, if in fact that we know from from other cities that, that, that those limits have, or, or that that type of policy has been obtainable by. Right. And, and, and if indeed other, other cities require those kind of limits. But I would assume we would want a comparable, so like I'm not sure Springfield would be an appropriate comparison. Um, right? I mean, it's more of like a major downtown kind of city. Yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, yes and no. You know, an injury is an injury. Um, but True. True. I just don't know if it just operates a little bit different. I mean, just in yeah. terms of like pick up and drop off kind of thing. Picking up off that we don't, I know that we, he, Mr. Miller had said a, a fairly small percentage of the business are people like flagging down a, a taxi. They're usually called. Mm -hmm. I feel like in a more of a major metropolitan sort of area, you get more flagging down, which maybe might. I would imagine change, you know, insurance or seems like a more dangerous thing if you're pulling over to pick up fares than arriving at somebody's house. I don't, I'm yeah. totally making this up right now, but just off the top of my head, mm -hmm. I feel like there could be differences. But, um, okay, I am going to see if I can, I'm not sure how, but find out what other cities do. And then, I, when this goes back to legislative matters, where I will see it once again, I uh, will bring that information to them and see if we can get that finalized there before this comes up. Um, okay. to the mayor or their designee. Um, so not same as the previous ones. Um, Should be renumbered. I mean, relettered. Yes, it is oh. on the version I'm looking at. It does get re. Oh well, yeah, it does below, but it's weird. Well, it gets tricky. Also, it was noted at legislative matters that how it, for the rates of operation where violations and penalties were below. You know, the rates were below violations and penalties, which didn't seem to make a lot of logical sense. You should say what they are, and then you should say what the violation of those yeah. would be. So those were just switched. <clears throat> um, so rates of operation goes up above violations and penalties, and there's no, um, looks like Alan has just changed a section number because he double checked it under violation of penalties, but there's no substance change to that. And rates of operation are the same, they're just moved above there. And I think, I think that is all of it. So. Okay, thank you for going through all that. <clears throat> well, I'll um, move that we send those uh, adopted changes back to the uh, legislative matters on oh, no, actually Yes, I, I just wanted to say, um, whatever became of that 
thing about um, requiring uh, inspection stickers twice a year. Because remember we said that's not currently being done. Which, which, which <laughs> meeting was, this was, you're going way back, legislative right? Legislative matters. Oh, this was just yeah. a legislative matters? Yeah. There was a, there was a, we read the section about require, um, the requirement of sending the, the uh, taxi. Yeah, to twice, the section, twice, it's in number three, mm -hmm. where, where we had all those changes from community resources to mayor and their designee. That number three there. Right. Right, that's, 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 uh, at the six month anniversary. Okay, so mm -hmm. a current valid inspection must be possessed. Um, doesn't say at the six month. Oh yeah, because it's every six year. Month year month okay. operation. Yep. So, you know, I actually don't remember this. Did was Alan gonna? Was that just a discussion that we had? Was Alan gonna look into that, or it's not a state requirement? It's just something that we had required, but that's not done. Oh, so it was oh. in the original and it's never been followed. Right. Right. And it's not a state requirement. Well. If it's not, if it's not being done, it hasn't really ever been a practice. Then it would make sense to just strike that line and at the six-month anniversary of operation. Right. So it, they must obviously have a state certified inspection. So change it to every vehicle operated by the business owner shall be inspected by a state certified inspection station yearly. Yearly. Take out twice. Current valid inspection sticker must be possessed upon application for registration with the city and period. period. We can't think of a reason as to why it would be good to do it twice a year. Well, it's what the reason the reason I offer is just that they've never done it according to and so not not no. your recollection and they don't do it now and Mr. Miller even said that he, that he doesn't. He doesn't come in. Asked. He never comes in and shows. So it would right. Okay. Because um, they pretty much all have to come in at the same time. Do inspection. Right. Information. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. So the reasoning being just because it's not. The current practice nor has been right. past practice for a very long time. Right. Right. Yeah, it wasn't even, I mean, I'm not even clear from like who were they supposed to. Who they were supposed They're supposed to bring it back into the clerk's office. Okay. It looks like to me. Says shall be inspected right. upon uh, upon application for registration with the city. So part of their applicate their license application. Does the current do they have to show an inspection as part of the so they do that now? Okay. But it only makes sense to do that once a year with the application. With the application. Right. I mean, there's, well, there's never been any sort of. Notifying in yeah. six months. Policing, policing of it. It's never been something that the clerk's office has done. Okay. Okay. Um, so, do we need a motion as amended? Can I, yeah, can I, can I, can I yes. offer a, an amended motion <laughs> okay. that we uh, pass this on? as presented by our chair uh, with a positive recommendation uh, with the exception that 
in this section. Three sixteen nineteen A three. We change it to just yearly inspection requirements, mm -hmm. and with the exception that on insurance limits, we would ask legislative affairs to finalize based on some additional research. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Accepted. Yep. Yeah. So so. Okay, you accept that amendment? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we don't need to vote on the amendment, right? No. Just on the I mean, it's it. basically my original motion was just to um, send it, but then we had an additional discussion right. about this. But I meant that all of the, all of the things that we had uh, discussed would be adopted. Okay. So I take so many notes now, the pan's not here. How did you ever take minutes on all this stuff? She knows shorthand. Right? What's up? I said she knows shorthand. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a motion and a second. Is that right? Yes? Yes. Sounds any any further discussion on the motion to send this forward as amended with positive recommendation? with the exception of the section that needs to be researched further and will be decided at legislative matters. Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Aye, okay, no objections, no abstentions. Okay, that leaves here once again. Hopefully not to return. Um, oh, okay. Okay, thank you, Pam. No thank problem. you, Pam. Yes, thank you, Pam. Thank you. How's day one? Day two. Or day two, day that's two. right. <laughs> that's good. good. So signing the forms away to make all the changes, but we'll get there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Um, okay, so this brings us back to item number four on the agenda, which is the, the continued discussion oh. of the op-eds. This is a busy day. So. So Councillor Brewell sent around a draft earlier than a revised draft. Um, and then since Councillor Klein was not going to be here, she sent me some thoughts as well. So how would you like to do this, Councillor Brewell? Why don't we just go through paragraph by paragraph as we've, as we've, as we've done before and then you get to her, her, her comments can, can, can throw them into the, into the mix. Does that, does yes, that make sense? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say as, a, as intro that because of the references to the downtown Northampton Association of the Chamber, I did uh, run this draft past both Amy Kaley and Suzanne Beck and got some some clarifications back from it, which are reflected in this revised draft. So I feel like I, feel I did kind of the fact checking that I wanted to do. So you queued up? I'm gonna get there. <laughs> oh, here we go. I got it. Yes. Now I'm queued up. Okay. So there's the introductory language that's been there before. And then we have the first paragraph, which is just a little bit of setting, setting the stage and summary of uh, attributes, strengths, challenges, delicate balance, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so do you want me to go, should we go paragraph by, that would make sense, right? Or does she, does she have comments in every paragraph? I and she, and, and, and I have too. a comment on this paragraph, she okay. does, although I think, so my comment was that it looks like you've sort of, uh, you took out fragile and complex. So now it says it's clear that to us that the continued health of this com of this complicated economic machine, which I, which I think works better. I, I was worried that it was, we were, it was more, we were more, it was more of a contradictory sentence than like a paradoxical sentence. So 
Um, well, uh, yeah, so I struck fragile in part because of that another reference, another use of that word, so. Oh, wait, you can't actually, that's not the section, sorry, that I was talking about. Right. So my comment was, sorry, farther up. So at the same, but it says at the same time it's fragile. So it says it's strong and remarkably resistant, but it's resi resilient. But at the same time, it's fragile and in need of vigilance and constant support. So I just felt like that was a little bit. Like, can you say that it's strong and resilient, but yet say it's fragile? Those fit for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's... Maybe, maybe, there's, maybe there's a better word, if you've got a better word. Unless you're saying in some ways it's strong, and in some other ways it's fragile. Mm -hmm. So that it's both strong and fragile. Right, I mean, I like the idea of the paradox. I'm just a little bit worried that as written, it doesn't, it's, you, you can't say that it's resilient if you're saying that it's also fragile. So, so well, what, are you, what are you suggesting as an alternative? Well, I, I liked what Councillor Kearney was saying, that if you just sort of qualify it a little bit by in some ways. So yeah, you get right. Just the some ways at at the same time, in some ways it is fragile. But you keep the strong. Okay, I feel like this is it's a very nice poetic sentence, but I just wasn't sure if it rang true to me. That makes it seem as though in it's, most it's, it's, it's more it's, it's, it's more uh, strong and resilient right. than it is it's, it's, fragile. It's, it's, Strong in many ways and remarkably resilient, but at the same time it is fragile in other ways, and in need of vigilance and constant support, something yeah. like that. Sure, if you think that it stays true to your meaning, yeah. Okay. Um, then Councillor Klein, so she has thoughts on this too. She, uh, so she says, her comment is, it doesn't make sense to me here that the challenges are named, oh, wait, that's a little bit further down. It says, it, in this paragraph, it says, it doesn't make sense to me that here that the challenges are named one by one, but that the strengths aren't. It serves to emphasize the challenges, but not the strengths. I'd, I'd like to reiterate here that I personally don't see, quote, at-risk at populations and others on our side of us, end quote, as challenges, and would like to see this removed if you're going to list the challenges. That's her comment um, that's her comment and her edit let's say uh, right above that is that where it says but so but at the same time it remains vulnerable to the economic dangers experienced by other small city downtowns and so requires vigilant and constant support. That is her suggestion for an edit uh, right above there with the comment after that about the, the sort of listing of challenges. Um, and then she also notes in that section saying that I flagged, which is um, maybe mentioning the center of Florence. So the next so after the challenges are listed, that it's, it's clear to us that the continued health, health of, she suggests, these complicated economic machines, downtown Northampton and the center of Florence, cannot be taken for granted. Rather, these downtown areas. Except they don't call downtown Florence. Florence center. Yeah. Uh, that, that, was a, that was a challenge yeah. throughout this thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't the, mislabel so, it. So, so, so much the of this. So, so much of this is clearly about downtown Northampton, right. yet, yet there's sort of lip service now and then to, to Florence. But it doesn't all, not all that really, really applies to the Florence Center. So, well, so there's a lot of things there to, un, to unpack. Um, and I'm... <clears throat> Do you want me to go over them again? That's the best. 
best way to do this. Because there's com she has comments, she has she has edits, comments, and then what the right. oh no, those are yours. Okay. Throughout she has edits and comments. <coughs> so I would say that um, the first thing it sounds like she brought up was the well, seeing if, if strengths can be enumerated as well as challenges, but if, and um, her and uh, Council Klein's comment that listing, including at-risk populations and others on our sidewalks as a challenge is something that, um, you know, we weren't in agreement about it, and I think that's how it was, was felt. Well, so. how, uh, we, 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 we never arrived in agreement at the use of the word panhandling, and we have arrived and have used the, the phrase in, in probably both of the previous, or at least one of the two, at-risk population. We kind of settled on that. Well, that's what we used in our In, our, our, in, in our original report, yeah. and, and given that the the evidence is there that there are many, many, many people that we consider a challenge, including the mayor, who's hard at work with a, an advisory group working on this issue, that I'm, I would not be inclined to remove that, frankly. But I do agree, and, and I, I, just, I, I, I admit I kind of took a shorthand, I do agree that the strength should be enumerated as well. And, and there's a, uh, I, can, I can drop on a, sentence in the very first guest column that, that, that is a, a, a summary of those strengths mm -hmm. so that so that we would be enumerating the strengths as well as the as the as, as the challenges. I, 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 I totally agree with that. Um, it's probably more I, I yeah, interrupt, okay. but, um, it's probably more about so we did I think well we certainly used the term at risk population but I think by and maybe maybe this would Maybe by limiting it to what we had agreed upon in terms of definition and saying including at-risk populations on our sidewalks rather than and others because the and others is what we have, you know. I think so, that's the implication. Yeah, just take out the and Well, others. except in fact what we're realizing is that uh, much of the, much of what goes on on our sidewalks uh, is, is are folks who are not not homeless, who are not facing um, addiction or dependency issues, but are but are here purely kind of scamming the system. That's what the, the reference to others was. They're, they're, right, but that's where we weren't in agreement. I think in terms of, as a committee, I think that generally, even though that that came up, I think that we deliberately excluded that references to that references to okay. all those things in so our you think, report so just i think you need to take out the and the others, others. Okay. if to be if we're going to be okay. consistent with the with what the committee at least has um, said and uh, did, did we actually define the at-risk populations as a challenge in our report or was it a um we talked about hearing from right. people regarding at-risk populations and why just I know I, I I actually didn't bring the report, yeah, but but I, I and I, I have a vague recollection of what that the sentence in the earlier one that that sort of lists the strengths, but maybe also if it included a reference to the vibrancy of our sidewalks, how how all sorts of different populations downtown lead to a vibrant, and it goes along with our theme of everybody contributes to the vibrancy of downtown with that. Yeah, I think that there okay, could me, be a, me, you, could, you could look back at the vibrant sidewalks resolution. Yeah. I mean, there's language there. And I think we also, we definitely, we referenced it in the report and okay. used that language. Um, okay. I mean, it's, yes. fortunately, it's hard to know whether that allays her her concern since she's not here, but um, okay. even. And then, and then there was, she was suggesting complicated economic machines we call downtown Northampton. And, and 
orange center. center. Cannot be taken for granted. Rather, these downtown areas. And, and there again, there will be some folks in Florence who say it's not a downtown area. I would guess they'd rather be referenced than not referenced, even if it doesn't right, perfectly right. match okay. their identity okay. of it, maybe. Okay, these town tenors will continue. Okay. Did that? I think we've covered that paragraph. That paragraph. See, you thought we just, you were like, this is just an <laughs> introductory paragraph. Nothing is just <laughs> anything. Okay. Let's so move on to the shop local. Shop local. Um, would, okay, so my thoughts on that paragraph are, after, so I like, I like the first sentence and I was wondering if we could expand it a little in maybe a vague way. When you say keeping in mind who it is that supports our youth athletic organizations and arts groups, and I was going to say maybe in other endeavors, because we know, I mean, we hear from business owners that they get asked by a very wide range of... Right organizations or events or things for sponsorship. So yeah. um, just to kind of make that more inclusive yeah. and different. And then um, gives our teenagers their first job experiences. Um, I was going to say, and also just to, I understand I'm making the sentence longer, but, um, and gives our teenagers their first job experiences and help make Northampton a destination point, I was thinking. So just to sort of expand even more why shopping local is important. So they support our other organizations and um, groups, give jobs to everybody, and also are part of what makes Northampton a place where people, you know, where we get voted regularly as the best town to visit in the region or whatever city to visit in the region. Um, so that was just my suggestion to a reference to all of this makes Northampton a, a destination. Uh, what, 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 so let's different. see, it all starts with doing all we can do for local businesses, keeping in mind who it is that supports our youth athletic organization, arts groups, other uh, endeavors, endeavors, and gives our teenagers their first job experiences and help make Northampton a destination point is what I wrote. But that, that implies that it's their first job experiences that help. Oh. Make, yeah, I think uh, if, you, if you want that, it needs to be a separate sentence. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's our local businesses that, that make Northampton a destination. Destination attracting folks from far and wide, right? Is that the sentiment? Yes. Yes. With a, with a little bit of discussion for some words, I think. Absolutely. Okay. And then stay tuned. I was worried stay tuned sort of implied that we were kind of talking for the chamber. I'm leaving that out. Okay. Yeah, I, I, oh, I, sorry. I, I, now well, no, I did. I, 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 I didn't change the draft, but as a matter of fact, we got realize that doesn't belong. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and I mean, if I, we could say like we look forward to hearing more about it and helping as as possible or something. If we wanted to kind of like put our place into it, but I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Councillor Klein's suggestions are okay so the comment I'll start with her comment many among my constituents particularly the elderly tell me they can't afford to shop downtown anymore and that businesses there rarely have the basic provisions they need they see downtown as shishi and boutique and uh, as a shishi and boutique shopping experience for tourists perhaps we can say something here like quotes to the best of one's economic ability Quote, so people don't feel shamed if they feel they can't afford to shop downtown and find what they need. Uh, 
where would, to the best of one's economic ability, be witness? Does, does she mean that in the very first sentence? That's what she has. That's with what doing she, all we can to support our local businesses to the best of our uh, economic ability. But yeah, that makes that sentence super long. Yeah. Be right back. Makes it very long. It does make it long. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this can't be all things to all people and address everything. Um, where. If we were to try to put something like that in, how would you see that going? I mean, I guess if we were going to sort of do it verbatim, um, then like Council Khan just suggested, in terms of doing all we can to support our local businesses to the best of our abilities, but I'm um, not sure that I particularly like it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to have to retain a little bit of discretion. Well, I mean, I sort of also feel like we, as, you know, I mean, it always says, to all, it says to doing all we can. Uh, that, that in itself suggests, you know, to the... Right. To the, but we also don't, it says shop local, but we don't actually mention downtown in this paragraph. So that could be Florence Hardware. That could be Foster Ferrer. Exactly. That could be True. River Valley Co-op. It could be Stop and Shop. It's just True. it's a right. local business and it's right. not specific to downtown. That's, so that's I the, think that. So so I think I think that one we may be able to respectfully say we we, we get the point, but, right. but it doesn't necessarily. Yeah, I think shop local doesn't need to be doesn't mean downtown. Okay. Um, she, her, so, um, <coughs> what we just kind of, <coughs> sorry about that. So, okay, um, decided upon is that this paragraph actually isn't referencing downtown, so shop local can be a, it can be a broader, okay. it is a broader concept. It can mean businesses in Florence, it can mean, um, Greenfield or regional or, well, no, yeah, no, 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 even no. just like, oh, I see. But you know, okay, our Florence local hardware, business, yeah. or I'm trying to think of, um, uh, trying to think of. Well, sure, businesses, businesses along, you know, along. Yeah. It's broader along, than along, just downtown. So you can't. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, she suggests adding North Ham. Oh no, that's you. Sorry, I keep getting. There's a lot going on in my document here. So you have added North Hampton to Andrew. Um, and she has just sort of a under in the first sentence it starts with doing all we can to support our local business keeping in mind that is they that it is they who support our youth which is sort of a grammatical edit she's suggesting that it is they, they who, who not who it is that Okay. Okay, that's doing on that paragraph. Or, uh, yeah, so I think we, we can move to the next paragraph. Okay. It doesn't say it's coming to town. Um, I will give you my thoughts, which are brief first, and then she has a comment. Oh, she likes that paragraph. Um, uh, so Sticks and Bricks was open, and they've just sort of reopened and re visioned a bit how they so I was gonna I thought maybe and it's happening now with the arrival or reopening of such home furnishing businesses just to be more sort of um, exact and then in term when you're naming new the new food businesses um, I was gonna suggest also Iconica Social Club which just yes happened. exactly I'm also just a little bit Which one is that? I Iconica Social Club, which is the cafe that opened. It's in the 
parking. It's the building that used to be the law firm behind, behind the Cracker Haymarket. Barrel. Yeah. It, the uh, the pocket oh, park. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah where the, 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 and they just uh, opened a pocket the, park the or a park what, what? Yeah, a park Amber Lane. Amber, Amber Lane, Lane yes. Parklet. So they opened a parklet and they just opened their cafe that they've been working on so right next to the Lane. Exactly, right yeah, behind right Haymarket. Behind, yeah. They're going to have quite a rivalry going. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I thought of that too and I forgot to put it in. Electronic Social Club. Um, Which looks very cool, actually. It, they really are. It's remarkable. <laughs> they, have, they have painstakingly hand done every bit of the building nonstop for two years. They are amazing. Um, Councillor Klein's comment on this paragraph is Love this paragraph. Wondering if there's a way to add a sentence encouraging property owners, parentheses without saying, certain property owners to offer their spaces at rates of affordable uh, to business owners slash entrepreneurs? I don't think we want to be seen as this committee telling property owners that they need to reduce their rents. That's, that's, I, 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 th I think we, um, I think we would lose some credibility with folks if we were to um, maybe instead of that, there would be some way of referencing the affordability um, keeping keeping downtown, although that. Creating, creating an affordable downtown for entrepreneurial and business ventures is a priority here. That doesn't, it just, it just uh, it's more generally right. have the importance of affordability right. and in the business sense in order to be able to bring in business. Right. Well, how is North Hamilton's I tell you, it's all different about private, private business owners property owners taking risks with new ventures as well as spaces affordable for startup ventures. Is, is that kind of what we're getting at? Northampton's vitality. Has always and depended upon private business owners and property owners taking risks with new ventures as well as spaces. Upon, and then you have to the, put the, the it or something to make it refer back to vitality. As well as spaces affordable for startup ventures. Because if you just leave that as well as spaces, it's kind of a dangling cause. You have to. Upon, or I see, where you have depended upon. I don't mean to be like, you know, I'm just saying it's a way to be able to bring in as well as upon affordable. As well as upon spaces affordable for startup ventures. Right. I think that, yeah. That, that yeah. Okay. I'm not, she just asked for something that would reference. Right. Right. That work for you? It works for me, absolutely. Okay. One other thing I just thought of. Um, I'm trying to see if I, oh, I can see it. Tide Hold Ice Cream is actually called Absolute Zero. So the, the name of the business is, the is Absolute Zero, but what it is is Tide Hold right, Ice Cream. It's a small town when you can look out the window to do your research. Ah, that's true. I'm just looking at the time. I'll probably have to get out of there for some Okay, I think we, oh, maybe. Yeah, I think we can do this, right? Okay. Her, her comments are fewer from this point. So actually, I think we can move pretty fast from here. Um, okay, so moving on to the next paragraph. Um, I My thoughts were, um, so free films and music on the courthouse lawn, um, and, and at in front of Pulaski Park because everything else has at in front of them. And um, 
do we want to include Forbes because there have been lots of events happening at Forbes, okay. including yeah. at the Forbes Library. At Forbes yeah. Library. Right. Um, yeah. And then the last sentence in that paragraph just seemed to be sort of incomplete. Um, so I was thinking not to mention that yeah, these events provide. Well, if you put a ways. colon before that, yeah. then you can you be okay. Right. At, at the at the end of the previous sentence, instead of a period, that could be a colon, and then it's two separate clauses. Right. Um, and s yeah, it seems like she had a. Similar, similar ideas on how to handle that. Um, um, I, I get well. So, not to mention the fact that these are all ways to provide. That's not a sentence. Yeah. So, but you can right. make it. You can make it part of the previous sentence with a colon, or you can, I think grammatically it could be either a semicolon, but it's more definitive, which I think is what you're trying. Well, and it could, or it could just say, and all of these, of course, are ways to have fun while building community, which is a sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I took okay. it out because uh, Amy tells me that's not likely to happen after all. Oh, okay. It was a mistake for them to put it in there. Got it. Okay. Their advertising. Uh, took it out of the phone. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other? Maybe with the next paragraph? Good. So, um, I don't have any thoughts on it. Counselor Klein. Um, so just adding in that first, so adding, uh, so support, downtown Panther Association, Farmers Business and Civic Association, and the many other organizations making Northampton, which you would like, and, and Florence. Florence. Yep. 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 Okay. Individuals or residents support financially. I think I was thinking more the the general the general public. Right. But um, some of my best disagreements with myself. So so carry on. Me too. Um, so are you saying it's okay the way it is? I think I'm saying it's okay the way it is. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it was okay. clear. Yeah. Just wanted to air up with yourself. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> in a public forum, yeah. in front of the camera. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, do you have anything on that, Councilor Tony? No. Next paragraph. 
Um, I, since we're listing, I'm sure we're going to forget someone. I was going to suggest safe passage to add to the list. Um, yeah. And Councillor Klein. Nope, she doesn't have anything. That's you. Add it. You have downtown. Hampton. Um, so that's it for that one. Do you have anything? No. So on to the last. Um, I, my suggestion was maybe to add one more sentence at the end, kind of summing it all up, which might be a little schmaltzy, which is that um, we are all the city of Northampton, I was hoping the city of Northampton would feel inclusive enough to, ever, to Florence and Leeds, um, and we are in this together. And then end by saying, and Florence and Leeds too. <laughs> I mean, it, we are, it's all the city of Northampton. Florence and Leeds are part of the city of Northampton. Yes, right. yes, Which yes, indeed I they are. So I feel don't. like that should feel inclusive. I don't I think, I, yeah. I don't know if the residents of Florence and Leeds do, but I would like well, to. Well, we'll have mentioned Florence, Florence and Leeds half a dozen other right. times throughout the. I don't think we've mentioned Leeds anymore. Oh, you're right. But Leeds is part Florence, which Leeds. is part of the Don't, there, there, there are Leeds people who... Don't consider not. themselves part of Florence? Definitely not. Are you kidding? Leeds is... They, they, they started as... They were separate towns. Leeds was a separate town. Florence was a separate town. North was a separate town. Anyway. Well, so, 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 the, the schmaltzy side of you is going for... We're, we're like one more summing up sentence that we're all in this together. It looks like Councillor Klein has a less one. What, 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 what's hers? So her suggestion for this whole paragraph. Um, so second sentence: inevitable cycles of residency and ownership. And wait, and yeah, resident residency and ownership and market forces. We'll keep Northampton changing and vibrant. These cycles will continue to move our city. She says city should be not capped there in positive directions. Only as long as we recognize how interdependent we all are with our, here's the change, businesses, caring organizations, and governmental institutions. I like that. Businesses. Caring organizations. Caring organizations and governmental institutions and step up to benefit and interact with all of them. Step up to benefit and interact. I would swap those two, interact and benefit, because that kind of suggests that it's through the interaction that there's benefit. To interact and well. Oh, I see. Was yeah. there a with? Yeah, there's a oh, with Oh, I'm there. sorry. To benefit yeah. and interact with all of them. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm a little more fine with that than I am with, uh, with all due respect I, to, to the, 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 the <clears throat> chair's prerogative to exercise I'm, I'm just trying to bring us all in together <laughs> and have like a you, resounding you, you were, you were, you were thinking series. we could go kumbaya here. But that's fine. Let's <laughs> No, I no. So I, I think with, with our businesses, caring organizations, and criminal institutions, we step up to benefit and. All of these. All of them is what she said. Okay. 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 I think I my my notes will allow me to. Make if you those have changes. any questions, I have I have for edits. Okay. Okay. okay.
Any, 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 any other? Uh, only to say thank you for all of the work that you've done on all three of these, and coming and working with us and revising and writing. It was really quite a remarkable task that you took on and did beautifully. So thank you very much. Well, you're for welcome. All that thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, as you know, editing by committee was something I <laughs> wasn't quite sure about, but I think we got there. Yeah. And I, and I think this will be a better product as a result. So. Thank you. Um, I don't have any new business. Does anyone else have any new business? I'll move to adjourn. Okay. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.